Hello and welcome back. Um, a lot of you have asked me how to do some cool looking Photoshop images for your social media. So we're going to regularly do this once a month. Um, so everything that I teach on here, I'm actually going to do on my Instagram um, and show it to Lost Arts so you guys can see what the final image looks like from when I create it for you guys on the video right now. So for this first one, we're going to teach you how to have yourself holding up a playing card or levitating or whatever you want to do and have some cards floating around, um, some in the foreground, some in the background, the different depths and focuses and the different um, color shades, so some quite darker than the others. And I'm going to be using a phone. Just because some of you don't have DSLRs and the proper equipment to do it, so I'm going to wind it right back to show you what is possible with just a phone and some Photoshop. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first step is to set your phone up on a tripod. We're going to cut to a shot of that now to show you what the phone will look like. As you can see, I've done the most ghetto version with literally just some tape, um, my phone and the tripod, just taping it on so it holds it. If you have like a Gorilla tripod or something else that actually suits your phone, that's perfect. I'm just again taking it right back to the ghetto basics. Once you set up there, you want to set your phone frame so you're in the right frame. So here, you can see that I'm uh, setting it up so it's aiming the chair and I'm going to be sitting in the middle of it. And then I'm going to set the timer onto the phone. So once that's set, and I know where I'm going to be sitting, I'm going to come in and frame myself right. So I'm going to be holding out Nathan Dahmer's um, implicit V2 deck. So I think I'm just going to probably, actually let's make it levitate. So to do this, I'm going to get like a kind of a duo double thing. You can either just take the photo of you holding the deck like this and then you're good to go to go for the next step. But I think I'm gonna make it levitate. So what you're gonna do is have your hand sit like this. And you're gonna put your deck out of the frame. Have your deck sitting like this. You're gonna be looking kind of where you want it to be sitting. You're gonna reach over and hit the timer on your phone and take that shot. So once you've done that, you now want to have the same with your deck. But because you don't want to have your fingers obviously holding the deck like this, you want to kind of grab it at the basic far corners and take a shot. Doesn't matter where because we're going to Photoshop and crop this out later. What I'm doing here is I'm literally just gripping it as the minimum amount I can on the deck. So I'm just grabbing just up here and then we're going to just take a shot of that. So again, Timer, and we're gonna take a shot of the deck. Perfect. Now, to get the cards of all the different foreground cards, you don't need to take shots, you don't need to have someone spread the cards over from top of you and um, do that kind of stuff. We're gonna do it the simplest and easiest way. Again, obviously, it's fading over your head, that could be the simplest way, but to get the shutter speed right and to get the timing right and all this kind of stuff, you get the right look of you posing in the way you want to be posing and with the whole, all the cards falling around you, you want to make it look as nice as possible without doing as much work. So here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set a timer. You're just going to pull out one playing card and you're going to get your, kind of your, your thumb a little bit wet or sticky. So you're going to have your, literally your cards thing like this. So now you're going to go up again, hit the timer and you're going to take a photo of that playing card just like this and we're going to cut that out in Photoshop later. Perfect. Now all our photos are taken, we're going to go up to the office and we're going to get onto Photoshop and I'm going to teach you how to edit it all. Okay, if I've done this quickly, now I should be able to up one of these four cups. If I've done this right, we should be able to... Now we're up in the office and I've uh, airdropped all of my photos onto my computer. Um, so here you can see them here. We can go through and we can see there's our cards, which we're gonna cut out the box. It's gonna be levitating off our hand. 
So there's my hand, it's all looking rather good. I'm pretty happy with those. So now we want to open up our background image, which is going to be the base for all of our things. So I think probably, let me go on that's a little bit lighter. So we're going to open with an Adobe Photoshop. Now once that opens up, now we have our little background image. Nothing much going on here right now. So we're going to go in and now we're going to open up the one with one of our boxes. So which one do I like best? Um, probably kind of like this one. Um, because I can see the top of the box here is not covered and the bottom you're fine. I can cut straight along that line. If I were to do the other one, maybe kind of a little bit of a shadow. That's not too bad. I can fix that up, but you got more of a reflection of my finger on the top here. So I don't really like that one. So we're going to go again, the lighter one, and that's the one I want. So again, holding control open with and Photoshop. So now we've got this. So now we want to cut around our box so it can be levitating. So we just want to take a uh, holding control again on the background and go duplicate layer and drop it onto our other photo. So go OK. And you can close that one. You don't need that one open anymore. So here we have our image. So we just want to draw, you can either get a little quick selection tool around your box. Make sure obviously you're on that layer. Go up into select and hit inverse. So what that'll do is when you select that tool here, originally, that'll select everything within that square. We want, we want to delete everything outside that square. So we'll select inverse and delete. So then you have a little rough outline of your card here like this. Alternatively, you can go in, which is what the best thing to do. Otherwise you have to go through and pretty much repeat the same process twice. But you just go through and cut out around your object. So in this case, obviously the box and across to here, to there, I'm going to bring it up. Box comes in a little bit here and then back out. Doesn't have to be perfect because we'll go through and tidy it all up later. And again, once you see that little circle come up, you're finished. And then the same as before, select inverse and then delete. So now we've got a box that's levitating and kind of want to match it up with where my eyes are looking. So I guess. So eyes are looking down here. Perfect. Pretty happy with that. Now, that's the levitation in. So if you just want to do a levitation, that's perfect. You're done. You can export it out. But I want to do some cards floating. So we're going to come back into here and open up one of our card images. Um, so again, probably, I'm so impressed. It's very good. Look at me go. Um, probably go this one. Again, the lighter one, open with an Adobe Photoshop. Now we want to come back in and do the same thing we just did with the card box. Now, you might be thinking, oh, this card's a little bit out of focus. Um, I did that on purpose because obviously I'm not going to be the main focus is on the levitation of the box and these are just in the foreground and background and they're going to be blurred out anyway. So I'm just going to select the card. You can obviously do it in full focus if that's how you want to do it. Um, and then again, inverse and oh, we want to copy that to, you might go layer from background because I've messed this up. You obviously want to copy it to your other layer. But if you do what I just did and haven't moved it over yet, 
you hit control and you hit layer from background and that transforms it as to a layer. So when you delete out, you have a transparent background. Otherwise it'll come up with a fill layer. So now here we are. We will now want to duplicate it like before onto our other, onto our other project and don't save. So now here we are, we have a card. It's all a little bit, you've obviously got these corners in and this is where we come in and tidy everything up. I'm gonna change it to a crisp outline and come into our card and just go around the edges. You can do a quick selection tool, but I'm not a big fan of that because sometimes it gets the wrong selection and it's a bit more pain in the ass than what it's worth. So I'm just gonna go through here and erase everything out that we don't want. Come across and we're good, we're golden. And how's our edges looking? So you can see a bit of thing here floating about that we don't want. So erase that out. And around the side of the card, we've still got this little bit of this edge we don't want, so we're gonna slip there. Bring it down and delete that out. So now our card's looking pretty good. Again, okay, we might want to touch up here. Just want to go through and tidy it all up. So you got again, obviously, it doesn't matter too much because we're going to be blurring it out. But we can see what that kind of looks like now. Now we want to multiply this, duplicate this multiple times and put this throughout the whole, the whole image. So we're gonna go through and control and then duplicate layer um, and just do this a couple of times. So we grab our first layer and we wanna um, move this card around and create it into a different atmosphere of the, all the others. And we don't want it in this 2D space. So we hit Command T on it and we kind of uh, either rotate it around to like this. Now we make it a little bit bigger because we're going to have it right in the foreground and quite blur it out a bit. And then once we're happy, we hit return. We come up into edit and then down into transform. And then you're going to play around with these three. Skew, distort and perspective. Warp is a whole nother thing if you want to play around with that. But we're going to skew this and we're going to kind of tilt the back up like this. So it's kind of like disappearing, kind of. And then we're gonna hit, you know, play around with these and just make it look right. So we're gonna play around with this now and see what we get. Okay, so now we can see that our card looks like it's a, it's obviously a little bit smaller now because I've changed perspective on it. I'm gonna scale that up. You can see it's kind of like it's tilted a little bit. So again, we're gonna make the you can command T and scale this up a little bit like this. And I wanna put this off a little bit on the image. And now we're gonna go through and blur this out. So with your layer selected, come up into filter and hit blur and go to Gaussian blur. And this is where you're gonna decide how much you want it to blur. So that might be too much again, so I guess a little bit of blur. So you still kind of make out what it is. And then okay. And if you want to change the lighting on it, you can either go up into your brightness and contrast. It's going to change most of your other layers. Um, so the way I do it in the easiest way is go into color overlay. And you're going to go into here and you're going to either make it black and you're going to just darken your card up like this and play around with it here just to darken your card up. And again, we're going to just start here and we're going to lay, start laying things out and around. And this is where we're going to start playing around with some of the images. So let's get into it and keep going with the next layer and the next and the next and the next. Now, 
got some cards floating around here in the foreground. You want some to be in the background. So say if we want this card and this card here to be kind of going behind the record player here, we're gonna to have to come down into here into our background image. And we're just gonna use our selection tool and just grab a piece of the record player that we want to take. I'm gonna hit Command and C and then Command V. And that pastes our bit of record player in. We wanna bring that right on top because we want it in front of this card here. You can see here, now we've got a piece here, but obviously we don't want this cupboard in the way. So we're gonna come down here and select our record player. And do what we did with our deck and our card and just draw a line around it all. So just like this. And then we want to come up to where our card is and just a rough outline and then hit delete. And then there we go. We've got our card going in behind the record player and we can now adjust that card. Make that a little bit smaller. Because obviously we're going to try and go with our depth. So we're going to try and keep, again, you can move this up and down now and make it disappear more and more and more behind the record player, whatever you got to do. And you're going to play around with the depths here. Um, and try and get, use this as a reference guide to how big the cards are. Obviously, the bigger they are in the foreground, the bigger they are here compared to the deck. So, we want to play around with that. And then we're going to just keep going until we're happy. Okay, so now I want to actually blur my image out. So I'm a bit more in focus and my background is quite blurry. So it sort of sticks around with the cards that these are in depth of field and that kind of thing. I kind of want the record player to be in focus as well. So uh, for record player and me in the deck, record player might be a little bit out of focus, but we'll get into that in a second. But we'll just focus on me for the time being. So we're gonna hold in uh, control and duplicate our layer. Now we want to have um, me in focus, like I said, and the background out of focus. So we're gonna go here. We're going to turn this off and we're going to duplicate this layer again just in case we make any mistakes. We can have that. So now we've got our two layers. We're not going to touch this on. We're going to leave it unlocked just in case we make mistakes. And we can't go back on that. So we want to have this layer here and go filter and then blur. And then again, Gaussian blur. And that looks pretty good. Pretty happy there. That's 6.8. So we're going to hit OK. And then here, we're going to turn this layer on and we're going to, again, quick selection tool. I'll show you why we're doing this in a second. It's just because when we do a crisp line around me, we kind of want that nice crisp line that defines me between the blur and the background because if we were just to blur all of this obviously these edges would be blurred and then when we refocus me uh, it would be you could see the ed edges were blurred so we want to keep these edges nice and clean so we're going to do the same we did before and then we're going to delete that now okay. then we're going to do what we did with the cards and uh, select, inverse, and then delete. So here we can see uh, that's all blurred out now. We've got these weird selection bit here where the background isn't quite blurred out and we are not obviously, so we want to bring that back. So this is where you're going to come in and you're going to erase here. I was talking about before of having the blur. You see my ear here coming through and being a bit of a blur. I'm happy with that. If you weren't happy, so like, uh, let's find a piece on here where you wouldn't be happy with it. Um, go with this. Come through and fix that up in a second. But say if you're up here, oh, here we are. So the top of the hat. So we went like this. You wanted to go around the outside. You can see it kind of blurs around here. And if I, I wouldn't be happy with that. So what I'd do is I'd come down to our background layer where it's blurred. 
and I would get my stamp tool, turn the opacity down so it just takes a little bit to come in, and then clone stamp it in behind like that. And you can see that the background's now disappearing. And just keep coming in until it looks decent. You're going to hold in um, Option and select away from where you want to clamp stamp in. So we're going to try and get that color the same. So we can see up here that uh, you got the layer here. It's not quite the same. So we're going to come in here and do that. So we're going to select here. We want this color over here, here. And then we're going to come through and we're going to raise this in. So there you go. You can see that's now tight, clean, crisp, but also the background matches in. But I'm not going to worry about that because the layers in my layers background matches in quite well so we come back out you can see here my background I don't need to feather around the edges because that kind of this is a very um, it's a very uh, plain color so it kind of blends in well anyway so now I just want to go through and get as close as I can to erasing where I want to have come out so obviously around here we just want to go through the whole image now and erase out and around So there I am, I'm kind of, I'm all in focus now. The background isn't in focus. And again, I want to make this a little bit more focused. So I'm going to come through and I'm going to change this. So it's not quite as blurred as me, <clears throat> but it's still relatively in focus. So we're going to come here again to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And this is where I was in focus. This is what we did for the, the background. We're going to make it a little bit more focused. So we're going to make it around about, about two. That looks fine. And we're going to go through and duplicate this bottom layer again. I'm going to go duplicate. And okay. Actually, So we're going to go through and duplicate our layer that's not blurred. So this is our blurred layer here. I'm going to go through and duplicate this again. We're just going to blur this to the same as this top piece here. So we're going to go OK. Then we're going to go um, blur. So again into filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And we're going to change it to two. Now we want to put this up above our background layer. So here. This is all the same blow now. And then we want to go through and do what we did to me. So come through here, let's do a quick selection. Like this, select, inverse, and delete. And there we go. We have this in more in focus. The background, we're going to all of a sudden lose all of our focuses on our cards and on the uh, background of the image. So this is coming along well, so we're just gonna go through and tidy this up a bit more. So this is where we're gonna have that weird thing like we had at the top. I don't want this. So we're gonna come through. I'm gonna get rid of this. So this is a nice green crisp line down here come through here, which is our layer here, the, the background blur. So we're gonna turn this on. And we wanna select our layer and then clone stamp, hold in option. And we're literally just gonna do this. I'm gonna bring in, I think, a couple more cards and then we're good, we're done. So I'm just gonna overlap some cards now. So bring them into like foreground, background, and that kind of thing, so I have some lapping and that kind of stuff. So we're going to here, I'm going to take this one here, and I'm going to uh, duplicate that layer. So duplicate. I'm going to duplicate that layer, like this, and then we're just going to move that up to like behind this one here. I'm going to change the size. So not quite as big as that one, so it still gives it the 
um, look. And then we're going to go and change the distortion and things of like this. With this card down here, so we're just going to keep playing with this until maybe we drink a little bit. I think it needs a card down there, but I don't know if I like the angle of it. So we're just going to play around with this a little bit more until we're happy with the angle. Quite a few cards floating around um, in different blows. Now, if you obviously this is quite well lit, so if you want to change some of the cards, so say for argument's sake, this you got that one we changed before the colours. This one we want to make this a little bit darker as well. Um, so just like this, you just go through and change your colour overlay. I hope that makes sense. So now we've got through here, we've got all of our cards in. Um, in different layers, different uh, things. So I just don't maybe I want this over here. This is where you can go through and play through some of your cards and see where you want them floating in and about. Perfect. All right, so I think I'm happy with this now. We're gonna go through, select our bottom layer, our very last layer, and then scroll up to our very top layer, hold and shift so it selects all of our layers. And hold and control and just select one of the layers and click merge layers. It brings it to just a one whole big image. So when you save it, it doesn't save it as an image with several layers. So we click save as. Okay, so now we're just going to save it to wherever you want to save it. Then you can export it out and edit it up in a program that you want to use to bring the colors out or anything you want. If you want to edit it in Lightroom on the computer, you can also do that. Um, and then you're good to go. So again, you don't have to use cards please by all means have a play with it. Have, get creative, come up with some cool ideas, just cards or like rings or coins if you're in coin magic or um, anything you want. Um, cookies, I don't know, uh, scones, I don't know, um, magnets, photos of little, little, uh, little lemons on them, I don't know. Whatever you want to go through and do, have a bit of a play, have a bit of a thing and just come up with some cool ideas of bringing depths of field in and some cool different placement of objects. There you go. Thanks so much. Well, I'll see you next month. Yeah, next month for a, another tutorial on photoshopping images for Instagram and social media. Bye.